Welcome to the video. So today I'm going to be Very doing a Xiao Ming legendary campaign. It's going to be a guide playthrough Father and it should cover the first 10, 15 turns and I'll try and explain everything that I found I to be pretty effective. To so for starters, you just want to attack the rat. The the Get the added diplomacy from killing the army. You can just auto resolve this one. The damage is pretty negligible. But I will go for replenishment, just so they're all at full health when we get to the next battle. And I did this first, not just for the diplomatic boost, but to get the alchemist. The alchemist can be both yin or yang. And you just have to make sure you appropriately build buildings and lords based off of uh, what the hero is so you can get harmony. So I got a yin one and Xiao Ming is a yang lord so if I look here I'm gonna have to balance it. So regardless of what you get you will need to uh, get a yin lord. I much prefer the dragon blooded lords. The Lord Mag Magistrates are frankly pretty weak. They can buff ranged units, but apart from that, it's it's pretty disappointing. So I'm gonna go for Enlightened. It's kind of got an arcane conduit going on, which is really good. I'll make this guy. And I'm gonna delete this. I don't need these. The melee infantry, I haven't fully tested them out, but I still think that ranged are a better option. So I need to, since I have a, a yin dominance, I need to get a yang building. Personally, I prefer it when I can make this building, but I'm gonna go for growth. You can go for the other one as well. I just want to go for growth. So I'm going to make two units of these guys. And let's go research. So technology wise, I like to just go down the neutral line, straight down the middle. I don't want to be dealing with having to balance around the technologies or get, uh, just because I don't have many buildings to do it. I don't have extra hero slots to uh, do it instantly on the turn either. And it can be kind of a pain. Plus, I really like the uh, extra control that you get. But obviously, that does take quite a few turns. So, But I'm not overall, I'm not that impressed with the Cathayan technology tree. Okay, after that, we want to be getting some agreements. So we can just go to Quick Deal. And we've got these guys. Just get some money. These guys get some money. And that's all I'll do for now. I don't think I can, you can get any more. Which is fine. You don't want to rush getting all your diplomatic treaties straight away. You can make a bit more money and uh, you got to be careful about these rebels and how much they hate you based on who, what treaties you're making. So now we're up to the caravan. So the caravan is a interesting mechanic. I wouldn't say it's uh, too difficult. But what you want to be doing is... You, uh, personally, what I like to do is I like to go for Drakenhof here. Uh, it gives a sword with regeneration, and I like to go for Altdorf here which gives a trinket that gives fire resistance reduction for local armies, which is really, really good for Xiaoming, since he's got fire-based damage. And so what I'm going to do, what I, I prefer to go for Drakenhof first. It's also important to note that the caravan, as the campaign progresses, caravans get harder and harder and harder to push through to these further provinces. So what I like to do is I like to go for Drakenhof, then Altor, Marienburg, uh, Kislev, and then sort of uh, close in. You want to be going to one, don't worry about the money, just go for each one as they come up. 
and it'll give you a random purple item. Some are good, some are bad. Most of them are okay. Uh, but yeah, you just want to prioritize these ones further away because chances are you're not going to be able to make it as the campaign goes on. And it's really hard to keep caravan armies on legendary difficulty. On the lower difficulty, uh, difficulties, I imagine it's a little bit easier, but that's just something to think about. And so we've reached the end of our, our turn and I'm just going to enter. Okay, so we've got some balanced harmony, which is what we want to see. We've got our extra lord, and we have Xiaoming. So we're going to go this over here. Is so I wouldn't manually resolve this. Your infant, melee infantry will take way too much damage here. You can bring the lord up. And uh, I'm going to upgrade this. I'm going to leave this for now. So from what I've gathered from doing this a couple of times, you will always get the Jade Barracks in Tier 1 settlements, at least at the start here. And so you don't want to be uh, creating a, a Yin or a Yang building because then you'll get rid of the Harmony. But you first up you want to attack these guys. Um, make sure you're doing this manually. Uh, for battles, uh, I'm not going to include all of them because it takes too long. But what I am going to do is uh, speed them up. Okay, so if you want to watch that, I will put it at four times speed for the battle. And so you want to be doing a playback speed of 0 0.25. Okay, I just want to occupy it. I don't want to go for anything. Oh, I don't want to cause too many problems for public order. So I like to go magic first, magic line. Get that wall of wind and fire. I think it's a very, very good spell, especially in the early game. Want to push the Lord forward. Gonna build some more peasant archers. Recruit some more. Uh, and yeah, so you have the training camp. You want to delete that. Next turn, I will make a yin yang building and keep the harmony going. See if we can get any more agreements so we can get heaps. So we'll go this guy first. Heap. Oh, I accidentally did non-aggression pact. Harmony is Lord Magistrate. Through me. Just get a trade agreement with these guys. Don't get a non-aggression pact. Ah, that's right. I accidentally had it on the wrong tab. But anyway, just get a trade agreement. Don't get more than you need, especially for Miao Ying. 
And you'll see why in a bit. Just make sure there's nothing else I can get. Especially looking at ogres. Nothing there. And that's turn two. Not too difficult. So there's Snickage. Okay, I don't think this choice matters too much, but since I have four, five infantry, three, I'll, I'll go for the crossbowmen. The Iron Dragon. Just about the caravans, they're kind—they're very hard to keep alive for the whole camp, uh, the whole campaign, just because you verse very strong armies and you have no access to magic, but you can put heroes into those caravans. You can't trade units into them, but you can put heroes in. So that's something to think about. I don't think it's worth it, and I always forget. And it's very hard to keep them alive long enough to actually be recruiting more heroes. Okay, so you can see Snickage here. So this is when the campaign gets uh, can diverge a little bit. But Snickage is here. If you go out to attack him, he's just going to run away. So what I like to do is go to about here. Seeking rare substances. Make sure you're in distance of the City of Monkeys. Get into that ambush stance. And then I like to... Encamp stance so you don't get ambushed. And start recruiting. Now you got to remember... That the first, so I'm here. That's as far away as I want to get because I'm not confident that I can get to the city of monkeys. But the further you are away from Snickage, the more chance you have of ambushing him. So, but uh, hoping for an ambush. Now it's only uh, if he spots you, then he's gonna like underway somewhere useless that you can't reach because that's what the AI does. And if he doesn't notice your ambush, he should engage and then he can't really get away. Or I think he just takes the... You can attack him. You can intercept him. And if you ambush him, you ambush him. And it's really easy. But you want to be recruiting here. Make it look like, oh, there's a weak army here recruiting. You can attack him. And hopefully, fingers crossed, that works. There is a good chance it doesn't. So that's something to consider. Now... I want to build this. And uh, this... Personally, I, I generally like the yin buildings for the economy, but you, you really want to focus on balance. Ruler of the sky you can upgrade the alchemist. Oh, I want mobility first. Magic's not as important because you've got the Xiaoming. Let's double check agreements. Nothing happening. Nothing happening. Uh, you don't really want to do too many more agreements just yet you want to uh, you don't really need them and it can cause diplomatic problems uh, early on and you don't really need the money so that's turn three done and fingers crossed he takes the ambush if he doesn't you can say file it and redo this if you want so I ambushed him that's pretty unlikely you can just auto resolve this if you want. You can manly resolve it as well. I can't remember if uh, if you win, he dies straight away, or if he retreats. In Warhammer 2, you, if if he attacked you, it was a retreat. Actually, just in general, ambushes were retreats. But yeah, but I'm just going to auto resolve this. They're all going to die. The Didn't take too much us. damage because it was an ambush. I can think about what I want to do here. I don't think the golds. I just want to keep it high. If you want to manually resolve it, uh, that's fine. If you do get an ambush with Xiaoming's army, then you should be able to beat them without taking too much damage. Okay, now we're going to go to the City of Monkeys. The Iron Dragon. If that doesn't work, and Snickers doesn't come, let's say he goes over here, like underways here, just out of range, you can uh, give uh, your lord a couple of units and sort of 
God Zen Wu. The army's not that strong, Skaven aren't that strong. And you can it's generally not too hard to deal with. But you definitely do want your lord for heading north. But we're gonna go to the city of monkeys, take that. This joke lacks humor. Retribution is nigh. Windshaper. Redouble your speed. It is my calling. Put the two archers into Xiao Ming's army. I'm just going to grab whatever. It's not too important. A gift from my ancestors. And definitely manually resolve this one. Oh, I'll get a uh, Root Marcher and Inspiring Presence. No, I'll get uh, Root Marcher and Magic. It's not too important, but it's really up to you. As long as you get Magic first, you'll be fine. So I'm going to manually resolve this one, so because uh, you do take some casualties. Uh, for this whole campaign, if you want to manually resolve, just manually do it, because you're going to be fighting a lot in the early game. Okay, so now that you've taken City of Monkeys, you want to try and get a, a peace treaty with these guys. They're going to be pretty close to wanting a peace treaty with you. It's going to cost you a reasonable amount of money. It is worth it. Once you give offer the money, then you can get a non-aggression pact, which will reduce the amount you need. So you can get rid of that, redo it, and you only have to pay a thousand. This is definitely worth it. I would take it. You are well schooled. And you won't have to worry about them. You can confederate them later, and they'll give you like a tier four settlement. They'll also uh, go to war with the, these guys, so they're going to be pretty distracted. But uh, they like you a lot more, so. You shouldn't have any problems. So, once you've taken that, you want to get two more of them. Keep going along the magic line. Uh, let's get that, the augments. Just move this guy forward. And honor your ancestors. It befits my high station. The iron. And we've got another barracks. We can delete that. We can upgrade these. We've got the province now, so.
It's going to go for research rate. You can go for control as well. You don't want to be uh, keeping uh, taking too many risks with your public order and getting it close to 100 because your harmony will become imbalanced every so often regardless of how well you try. You know, sometimes events happen that mean you have to take yin or yang or whatever. Okay, so we've got that. I should have checked diplomacy, so just make sure you're checking that at the end of every turn. It's not too important, but uh, you can now get a few more agreements. Okay, so caravan encounter. My recommendation for this would to always be to lose a bit of cargo and get some diplomatic relations with them. Okay, so now you've got the compass up. So generally what I like to do is just go for the Celestial Lake. You can also, yeah, I just think the Celestial Bay, uh, Lake's the better one. You get growth, which is really important in the early game. You get more income from the buildings in Cathay, and it's just overall pretty useful. Great Bastion's also okay, but I find it's better when you're uh, just trying to consolidate your territory. And we're not really up to that stage yet. So, now that we've done the compass, what I want to do is I want to move to here. Seeking rare substances. And manually resolving meant I didn't take too many casualties, so I don't have to worry about any replenishment. And I, I deleted the long mile riders because they're very expensive, they're not very good. And I'll just make two of these and that'll give me a full stack. All right, so this is something I missed out on, but what you want to be doing is getting this building and you want to be building it in the city of monkeys. I just forgot that you could build a, a pasture in, in that region. So that's something you need to do. And this also allows me to go to the Skaven settlement. And now I'll do what I was meant to do last turn and just try and get any agreements that I can get. So I probably should have checked this first, but it's fine. But I'll just show you. So treaties with northern provinces, it's a, it's a big hit. They're still going to be happy with me, but you, that's why you want to make sure you get a peace treaty before you start getting all these uh, treaties with Miao Ying. Alright, but that's the end of this turn, so not too much to do. Okay, so now I can attack the settlement. If I attack the Skaven on the outside, then he's just going to run away, because then just not going to be that strong. But I will do that. No, I won't. I'm just going to finish him off. But chances are I won't be able to kill him. We'll have to see what happens. And we can force march this guy to here. Beyond reason! Beyond sanity! Strike off the head! And I'll do the battle. Make sure to change the speed if you want to watch the battle. You can do a Pyrrhic victory, but you'll take out too many casualties. Replenishment rate isn't that high, so that'll just slow you down.
All right, now you've beaten Clanishin, so that's quite important. The Skaven in Warhammer 3 are pretty weak in the early game, but uh, they can cause problems. Okay, I'm just going to go down the magic line now. An extension of my celestial will. He'll be proud. And that's the end of turn six. Oh, double check your diplomacy. See, this is important. Uh, we got this. I'll just take that for now. No other trade agreements. Don't really need the non-aggression pact at this point. Okay, so we got a, a wares, uh, wares market. So you've got a choice. You can just make a, a yin building to balance it. Or you can delete this. And I'm deleting this because my plan is just to give this province a settlement to the Cathayan faction because I'll be able to confederate them eventually. And I don't want to deal with one settlement. But I'm going to keep it for now so I can get the replenishment and do all that kind of stuff. And that's the end of turn six. Okay, we're back to balance. I didn't screw that up. We can upgrade the settlement now. So if you want to finish off Clan Eshin, don't forget about them, or are they going to start trying to rune dwell? Actually, they'll probably just attack your settlement and die, but I want to get the extra XP experience. Just auto-resolve that. So I'll head this, I'll take this guy back. I'll put some units in. And I'll push this guy forward. So also, something to consider is that if you take too long to take this settlement or to defeat Clan Ashen, sometimes Sartorial's Watchers come from up here and, and attack you, and that really hamstrings your campaign quite a lot. But that's rare. That's if Yao, uh, Miao Ying loses her battle. But it doesn't look like she will. But just head north, consolidate this area. My experience with Miao Ying is that she's pretty much impossible to confederate early game and late game you're basically looking at her being completely wiped out having 200 positive relationship with you you having about four or five armies and having to threaten her in order for her to confederate with you so that's just how difficult it is so I wouldn't focus on that I just focus on taking out uh, Sartorial's watches here so I'm going to start heading over there next turn. And you want to push this guy ahead. I'm not going to force much because there is a chance uh, there's something there. But for now I can end turn. Open to assisting you. So they want, a military ac um, they want military access, which is fine. I'm just going to tick that. This means uh, you can go through their land without taking the diplomatic penalty, but at this stage, you shouldn't have any problems. I got a torment. So, as you can see, the Kurgan invasion, you being the human player, they are more than happy to ignore everyone else to go for you. So, this is something you'll have to deal with regardless of the situation up north. So, that's why you want to head over here because they're just going to kind of target you and it's just annoying. So I'm going to go Ambush Dance, I'm going to go behind, hopefully uh, they take the bait. Uh, I'll go a bit closer, I'm not too worried. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give these guys the settlement, because it's not that useful to me. Let us give thanks to our ancestors. And I'm going to give them money. No, no, I'm not. Screw that. 
I'll just give them a settlement, get some money from them, and they'll get the province now. So that should help them with growth or whatever. And there we are. So you have, I assume Slanesh or no Cinch probably gave the ogres that settlement, which isn't like great. Uh, as you can see, South Orioles watchers are still there. So you want? I'm going to head north, kill kill off the South Orioles watchers. Okay, they took the ambush. Am I going to ambush them? Ambush failed. For some reason, I can't. Uh, that's kind of weak. I don't think I'm going to take that many casualties. So that's fine. Uh, I'll go leadership because I'm going to start fighting some battles here. So Snake Gate's still not taken. I'll just tech check these. So the mines have been ruined. So Cinch is coming down south, most likely. Oh no, it's probably the Kurgan invasion that have done that. So I'm just going to keep walking over here, ambushing anyone that comes along. Yeah, see, look, they're coming again. Gonna do this again. Gonna buff up the peasant archers, I think, now. And get more movement, that's really important. Check agreements. Natural authority. Wind shaper. For better or worse, our fortune. Get some more get some more money. Fire and metal. So I got the von Karstein blade. He doesn't need it. It's too good for him. Now we can do the uh, the next caravan, so I'm going to add a, make another caravan. I like artillery officers. Uh, just because if you... Because um, artillery is just really, really good. So I'm going to go Altdorf. I want that trinket. In dragon fire, you shall burn. We're nearly upgrading. I can make a couple more buildings after this. Um, I like to go for the ambush first for the caravan masters because uh, getting ambushed is is probably the worst thing that can happen. And you are unworthy of existence. Okay, so they're not far enough away. I'm going to bring her forward. Going to attack him. He'll probably retreat. Or not. Uh, pretty weakened. Probably shouldn't be auto-resolving them, but I am. I'll just do replenishment. You can go for gold as well. And we'll be, we'll go and ambush dance again. Her up. So what I'll say about this campaign is there's a lot of variation for it. Uh, sometimes I've, I've played campaying campaigns where Meow Ying has been killed off by about turn six or seven. And it's a lot harder, but at the same time, you can get a lot more territory. So I'm going to take this opportunity to get these ruins okay let's head over here 
Okay, we got some Kurgans coming, that's fine. So... What I like to do is go for the Astromancer. We can upgrade these. Still not in harmony, so I gotta ignore that. Once you get past the first bit. Oh, Cinch was hiding somewhere. I uh, ambushed. That's uh, just gonna be an order resolve. I'll just go with replenishment. Hmm. Probably easier to auto resolve this if I don't. Uh, it'll be hard to hold the settlement before the reinforcements come, so it's easier just to do it this way. Uh, go for cargo. It's unfortunate, but... Okay, so Cinch decided that he would be annoying. So now I'm up here, I need to decide what I want to do. Hello, and uh, this is me just editing the videos, and I kind of just decided, because I had a couple more hours of footage to go through, that uh, once you get past this bridge, it's it's just not worth... Um, I don't think it's worth making a guide, um, just because there's so much that can happen. Like, you don't know if Cinch is going to convert these two settlements you know, whether Sathura's Watchers will be, uh, what they'll be doing, maybe they'll have taken that settlement, maybe they would have uh, killed off Mao Ying. And you also don't know where the Kurgans are going to be and what kind of situation is it going on. So once you get to the bridge part of this guide, it's kind of up in the air what's going to happen. But I just wanted to talk about the, the gates. Now the gates are pretty defendable. It takes a little bit of getting used to the siege battles. There's a lot going on, but what you, uh, what I like to do is, once uh, I've taken the Snake Gate, I like to just uh, defeat all the threats around here. So get rid of the Kurgan invasion and recruit a half stack or a two thirds of a stack at the Snake Gate. Just keep it behind the gate around here. Just sort of. Uh, in ambush stance, just waiting and waiting. So the Kurgans will go for the lowest tier gate, generally, unless they've got a lot of forces, which they might this time, but... And so, as they're spawning in, they'll kind of just head to here, or at least two stacks will head to here. And so if you're in ambush, you can just pick them off, and it'll stop the threat from getting any larger, whilst this settlement grows. Uh, then, uh, Xiaoming, I like to take out the... The Siege Faction, Sartoria's Watchers, uh, they're just really annoying to have around. They kind of hate everyone. And now in this campaign, the Savage Orc Faction declared war on me, so I'm going to have to go down and deal with that. Uh, sometimes that doesn't happen. Kind of just a case of these guys not being at war with anyone, so they just declared on we. But sometimes the Cathayan faction to the north declares war on them, sometimes the Ogre Kingdom faction to the south declares war on them. But not this time, so that can happen. So you will have to deal with that. But normally what I did was once I took out Sothorio's Watchers, I would start heading east, deal with the Greenskins faction, the minor one, deal with the Skaven faction, oh, over here, and uh, you kind of got to be careful. They do have underway. And then I would head down here. Kill off the Savage Rock faction here. Because uh, they're fighting these guys. So they're not going to be too much of a pain yet. But once they get a border with you. And they've weakened their enemy. They will start. Um, they will declare war on you a lot of the time. 
So that's just something to think about. You also want to be confederating the loyalists because they're pretty weak when they're dealing with the minor factions, but they're a lot harder to confederate when uh, they're quite powerful and they've got a lot more settlements than most of the other Cathayan factions. Uh, you want to confederate these guys, but I wouldn't say it's a priority. They usually are pretty weak and they die to a lot of things, so I've never had trouble confederating them. And you just want to confederate, consolidate Cathay, but just pick off all the threats before they become really annoying. Uh, make sure you've got that army here dealing with the Kurgan invasion. So for the, the western provinces, uh, Xiao Ming has a bonus with the Ogre Kingdoms. I just get peace treaties with all of these guys if you can, trade agreements. Uh, and then just doing the the Chaos Portal or the, the main campaign objective is quite easy. You just sort of hole up in Cathay, send off your, your Lord to to get all the souls and and do that. But if you want to do a domination campaign, it's a little bit harder. I'd probably head south, go in, uh, kill off these greenskins, and then maybe just start attacking the Ogre Kingdoms. Because south, it's a bit more annoying. You can't really take these settlements because the Kurgan invasion is constantly spawning in. And, and you've only got Chaos factions in this area, so most of them will not really like you very much. So it's better just get a bit more powerful from picking off some of the Ogre Kingdoms. You can, you can keep uh, Greece as friends, but maybe just pick off everyone else. And when you're heading uh, around this area, you can go over here and, and finish off uh, Kairos Fate Weaver, which is which will help the campaign a lot and mean you don't have to deal with him. But yeah, it's uh, not the most eventful campaign. It's really just the start. Uh, I, sorry, I couldn't really give too much more help on this. It's it's kind of a weird campaign. Uh, really hard, at the, kind of hard at the start and uh, really easy towards the end. But yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.